uh, neck bet and wadjet amongst others. Now the cat was also thought to be able to cure and scor- a, a scorpion or a snake bite. So the cat was was thought to have some connection with a cure for the scorpion, the the ginto, which is mentioned also in the Psalms and in the scriptures, in almost the same aspect, or the serpent or the snake bite, and was associated with the with Isis or Oset, known as the attribute, truly known as the attribute, but in European Nazi based Egyptology they call her a goddess really she was an aspect a, a, a teaching tool the the priests use these teaching tools but even these teaching tools after a while got out of hand so these these cartoons or these images pictorial representations that's what you call back in the ancient times the PowerPoint presentation was the hieroglyphs was the temples you understand that was a powerpoint presentation but when people started to lose the epinosis the full knowledge then these representations became denominationalism and took on a life of its own in a similar way to what happened with christianity after it was named christianity and it went among the Gentiles. It became that denominationalism and broke down until nowadays when people say they're Christian, somebody got to ask you, well, what kind of Christian or what denomination to know whether they favor you or don't favor you. So there's that those divisions even in Christianity, even though it began from a unitary basis. It was infected and now has become divided, fractionalized, frictionalized, and ultimately... Um, conquered by Satan and white, global white supremacy. But anyway, being associated with the cat now, or the cat symbology was associated with Orset, or Awul Sait, the true woman, although she is linked to the symbol in its protective. Now, in the protective aspect, now we have Orset linked to this in, in, in the protective functional aspect. But the point I wanted to make about the cat, just in closing out on this, this part of the reasoning right here, is that the cat, it's interesting because if you look in ancient Egypt and look up Egypt and cat and and maybe even tree and snake, you know, as, as links, depends on, I don't know what will work best in the Google, but you'll find ancient um, PowerPoint, ancient uh, com, comet, cometian PowerPoint presentation or hieroglyphs and papyrus and wall paintings where it will show the the cat right there at the base of the tree cutting off with like a knife in its hand cutting off the head of the serpent that right there is a symbol of the lion of judah that's what's a symbol of taking now the, the 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 types and symbologies from its source the southern genesis of Egypt, which is Ethiopia, going up the Nile, the true Hebrews being the ancient Ethiopians, those who journeyed over land and sea, and in the beginning established civilizations. But then these civilizations over time became infected. They they caught the Satanistic virus. And this is where we find our ancient kingdoms going through periods of civil war. We find that the religion or the spirituality starts to turn into it's the same thing that the Catholic Church, basically. So there's a link with ancient Egypt and the Catholic Church. But where white supremacy is wrong is it paints it, those who are all Christian and anti-Egyptian, they paint it as though that was going on all the time. While true scholars have really found that there was a progression and a, a gradual, over time, a decline amongst the Egyptians in their spirituality, you understand? It, the spirituality became more and more over time superficial, and as foreign peoples and 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 the so-called Asiatics and the Phoenicians and the Hyksos and and the others came in from the north. This is where we have a, a so-called Indo-European, the first so-called Indo-European types. The Javan man came in, 
this is where we have a more rapid decline and a great misinterpretation of what these these symbols, these parables, these proverbs, that's what they are, parables and proverbs. This is why when you look at that symbol of the cat cutting off the head of the serpent right there at the tree, that's what we have in the, our Bibles. That's, that's one and the same. But that cat now is the lion of Judas, not a lion's whelp, like a young, a, a, a young um, lion. But it's a more older line. It's a more mature line. And we're not going to even touch on the, the line points right now because we gotta we got to go forward and deal with this. But the line points are very interesting too because you have the young lion, you have the lion, like the Gobez, the adolescent, you know, kind of like uh, the Lion King lion in a sense, in its prime. Then you have the old lion. Then you also have the lioness. Then you also have the cubs. You have all of that right there in the Bible. And over and over and over and over again, you have Yahweh, he who is who he is, likening himself, you understand, to these animals. He says, I am like the eagle. You understand? Liking himself to even the ancient eagle of ancient Egypt, which was Herui. Which is an Ethiopic word that means chosen or elect. That word in Ethiopic, Horus, what you call Horus or Heru in the Metuneta, actually is Herui in Ethiopic. So Herui, which means in Ethiopic or good is, it means chosen or elect, is that very same as the birds. When it speaks about the bird people in the scriptures, the bird people. So when you go into the ancient Egyptology in the early days or the earliest period, there was a whole group of Horuses. There wasn't just one Horuses, but there, there was a time when the so-called Horuses or the bird people ruled. You understand? You had the serpent people come along. You had the lion people. You understand? Now we have the dragon because the, that serpent is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. This is where we have the Leviathan come in later on. So you really have the very same types and images. So if you just, 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 um, what they call it, prejudice? Is it prejudice? Um, when you judge something. It's prejudice, but it's summarily, almost like the summarily judging Egypt to be idolatrous because they have images. And because some of the images are a little strange to a Western European that, you know, which they, they had these like these little stick figures and stuff like that. Not these really detailed images and everything. They may be strange to a Western mind, but they have a very practical meaning biblically and scripturally. But the key, the key is his imperial majesty. This is why we are speaking on these subjects. That's the key. The Lion of Judah, that's that cat. That's that cat, and that links with the eye of Re and the so-called myth that speaks about when Re or Ra was an actual pharaoh of Egypt. That's a likeness in that sense from the southern origin of Egypt, which is Ethiopia or Tobia or the To, the good land. That's a likeness of what happened to his imperial majesty. The people being likened to the careless Ethiopians. The eye of Ra, the Derg, this other government, and Mengistu Haila, power of the government, power of Mary. Under the government power of Mary, the fields became awash with blood. The blood is the Red Terror or the Taza period, the devastation. Now we're at that time, you understand, where Ethiopia is is drunk, you see, which is that Ephraim prophecy in Hosea. And in Hosea also, Yahweh says he will be like a lion to Ephraim. He'll be like a lion to his people. So once again, invoking that ancient symbology, which we know through the revelation of his imperial majesty in Christ, is the lion of the tribe of Judah. So we have a full cipher right there. You understand? Nothing taken away. That needs to be there, nothing added that doesn't need to be added, but everything comes into a perfect, a perfect balance. So I'll end off on this right here and get that.